We are on lesson number nine this morning. I think everybody got a book. We're kind of going to be backing up a little bit. Everybody ought to be extra talkative this morning because y'all all got an extra hour of sleep. Huh? Oh, who took your book? Yeah. I missed that extra hour of sleep. Heather woke me up and said, it's time to go. I said, whoop. Slept right through it. I slept right through that extra hour. All right. This morning's lesson, lesson number nine, is the coming of the Christ, part one. Now, remember, we quarter study is this, we believe. We've been working our way up to this. The reality of God, the inspired word, reading God's word. Then early and later Hebrew history, God's plan to save man, so we can we can see this progression. We see all this coming. <clears throat> we have how many? Six different sets of scripture this morning to go through. And a lot of these verses, they just had a verse here and a verse there without the backstory. So like Wiley, I'm gonna back up and do the a lot of what's before our verse and then what's after it as well, just so we can set the stage a little bit better. The first two sets of scripture are from the book of Isaiah. Who wrote the book of Isaiah? Isaiah. Isaiah. Everybody grin. Good morning. Good morning. The, the prophet Isaiah. Um... And was it about six months ago, I think, we did our entire Bible study was on Isaiah. Isaiah was considered by some to be, quote, the greatest prophet. Um, the reason for this is, we've, we've talked about this when we studied Isaiah, um, he has the greatest number of of prophecies about the coming Messiah. Therefore, Isaiah was called the what prophet? Messianic. The Messianic prophet, yes. And this was written around 700 B.C., so 700 years before Jesus came and was born. So, um, first verse is Isaiah 7.14, but we're going to back up to verse number 10. We're going to do 10 through 17. And this section in the study guide is... Um, entitled Virgin Birth. So let's think about that when we're, as we're going through these verses. Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 10. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing? For you to weary men, but you will weary my God also. Verse 14, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then 15, 16, and 17, Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you Dread will be forsaken by both her kings. The Lord will bring the king of Assyria upon you and your people and your father's house. Days that have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah. So, back up to verse number 11. Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. We've seen this kind of imagery we remember from Isaiah before, where he'd say from the top of the mountains to the bottom, from the, tr- from the trees to the brook, that type of thing. What does he mean when he says, ask it in the depth or in the height above? Wherever, yes, and wherever you want. You know, wherever, however, ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. He's saying... Test God, but what does Ahaz say, say in verse number twelve? Uh-huh. <clears throat> he says no. Number thirteen. Then he said, "Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but you will weary my God also." 
O house of David. Who's the house of David? <coughs> yes. Israel. We have to keep on remembering now. This is Old Testament. This is Isaiah. This is 700 B.C. Ish. House of David, meaning Israel, of the entire lineage back all the way to King David. In our verse, verse 14. <coughs> Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Therefore means what? See, I can't, couldn't just start at verse 14 when it says therefore. We had to back up a few verses. Because. Yes. Because of this, um, to make you believe so you would know God's power. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Did it say a virgin? No. So how many how many virgin births will there be from this point and how many have there ever been? One. <clears throat> the virgin. He's talking about a specific one. So the is one and only one shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. We're going to get into that a little bit later but what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Yes. Verse 15, curds and honey he shall eat. What type of food is curds and honey? Cheap food. So would kings and wealthy people, rich people wear or eat curds and honey? Who would? Poor people. People of a lowly birth. So curds and honey he shall eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Refuse evil and choose good. Um, this whole choosing good, our act made me think of something, and that's a totally different, really different uh, thought process, but are actions committed in the flesh on this earth a choice? Yes, my looks up all of a sudden. All everybody went. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Here in Isaiah, the messianic prophet, seven hundred years before Christ's birth, said that he will know to refuse evil and choose the good. Yes, if it was a choice for Jesus, it's a choice for us. Why do we know that? Although we we're going to always fall short. Jesus was an always tempted as we, but what? Sin. Yes, sin not. <clears throat> and verses 16 and 17, before the child shall know to refuse the good, um, the land that you dread will be forsaken, so on and so forth. But before Jesus came, what was going to happen to the lands and nation of Israel? What did happen to the land of nation of Israel? They were forsaken by their earthly rulers. Foreign kings came and took over and, and them and their people. Uh, a lot of, several of the commentaries I read talked about how a lot of the prophets were, people liked them for a little bit when they heard what they wanted to hear and then when they heard what they didn't want to hear, they didn't like them anymore. So that's where people started to not like Isaiah anymore. Our second set of verses, uh, 15, Let's see, Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. We're going back up a little bit to Isaiah 52, verse number 13. This section in our book is the suffering servant. We studied that as well when we studied Isaiah. But uh, Isaiah 52, verse 13. Behold, my servant. Who's his servant? Isaiah. Oh. Who's the, yeah, Jesus. Who's the suffering, suffering servant? Jesus, yes. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was marred more than any man and his form more than, in, more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him for what had not been told them they shall see and what they had not heard they shall consider. <coughs> Verse number 14. 
so his visit visage was marred. What's it? What's a visage? Yes, face, his appearance, his features, his countenance, his ex- the expression on Jesus' face was marred. What's it mean to mar? <coughs> yes. Straight from Webster's. To ruin the beauty or the perfection of something. So, <coughs> his expression was the perfection of it was ruined more than any man and his form meaning his shape the way he was seen by other people more than the sons of men kings shall shut their mouths at him for what had not been told them they shall see and what they had not heard they shall consider from such a lowly position the suffering servant Jesus would and still does influence kings of this world One, who, verse 1, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? What's the arm of the Lord mean again? I see somebody. His word reaching out, yes, his word, his strength, his power. Verse 2, for he, that's Jesus, shall grow up before him, that's God the Father, as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So in the eyes of men, what about Jesus? Hmm? Nothing special. That's exactly what I wrote. Nothing special. Verse 3, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. What does acquainted mean? Associated. Hmm? Associated. Yes, associated, to know it well, to know something firsthand, to have experience with something. Grief. Grief is deep sadness. Man of sorrows and someone who would know deep sadness very well. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Would somebody read uh, verses 4 through 6? Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. 4 through 6? Yes. Surely he has bored our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God of the which But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Six. Yes, sir. All we are like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of our Thank you. <clears throat> Verse number four. Surely he has borne our griefs. What's it mean to, um, we know what grief says. We just said that. Sadness, deep sadness. What does it mean when he born our griefs? He took them on. Yes. He took them on. He transported them. He carried them. Was the cross that Jesus transported, carried, born, was that cross Jesus' cross? Exactly. It was not Jesus' cross, it was our cross. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Esteemed, meaning there we valued him smitten by God and afflicted. Verse number five, um, many common commentators, commentaries, things that you read will say verse number five of chapter 53 of Isaiah is the key verse, quote unquote, of the book of Isaiah. But he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. <coughs> Verse 6, all, all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid 
on him the iniquity of us all. On Jesus the iniquity of us all. <coughs> so our, Ms. Pat, you're here, our English teacher. Somebody help me with tenses. What does what tenses has laid? Has laid is present, perfect. So it means it it occurred, but it is still going. That's much better than what I wrote. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, when was Isaiah written? When was the book of Isaiah written? So, how was he speaking like it had already happened? Because it's already planned. Before the world was even created. Exactly. God already knew. If God already know, knew that, did Jesus already know? We often think about the few days right before the crucifixion. Jesus knew way back. <laughs> way, way back. Longer than we can imagine going back or going forward. That span of time. Jesus knew. <clears throat> to continue on with the tenses in that verse of 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Verse number 9. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Made his grave with the wicked. Where did Jesus die? On the cross, between two thieves. Grave was technically the cross. With who? The wicked. Two thieves. But with the rich at his death, where was Jesus buried? Yes. Joseph of Arimathea, the rich, a rich man. But with the rich at his death. So, 700 B.C., we know he didn't stay there. So that's our Old Testament part. Now, third set of verses, uh, Matthew. This is back to the virgin birth in our book. Um, it's Matthew 20 through 23, but we're going to back up to verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. <clears throat> as a Christian, as a person who's accepted all this, you read through that, you just go through it and you accept it. I've been in a couple of arguments in the last week with people on Facebook. <coughs> discussions. I'll take it back. Discussions. If you don't believe, verse number 18, before they came together, before they were husband and wife, she was with a child of the Holy Spirit. If you don't believe that, do you have a problem with the rest of the Bible? Yes. Well, I believe the Bible, but I don't believe... Stop. Yes, sir. You have a problem with all the Bible. Yes. Uh, you can pick any other example you want. If you don't believe that the earth was created in six days and on the seventh God rested, you've got a problem with all the Bible. If you don't believe in the beginning, God, if you say that evolution is okay and that evolution does not go against what God said in the Bible, the Pope, <clears throat> do you have a problem with everything else in the Bible? Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. What does it mean he was minded? He thought about it. He had the notion, the idea to, to do that. Yes. And then, you know, she 
pops up pregnant, it's like the worst things are going to go through your head. Had anybody ever been in his position before, or hers? No. Uh, no. Colin also complains about it. He's having a look at what society is looking on him as, even though he did have the dream that the angel came to him and said, hey, this is going to happen, you know. And he had to assume he was a man of faith, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it, then all of society is looking on him, and they're counting back on their fingers, you know. <laughs> yeah. a minute, you know. I yeah. Mean, He's got a big decision to make there, you know. Yeah, and as I just said, he had he decided to do it secretly, not publicly, not. Yeah. Um, would someone read verses twenty through twenty three, please? But while we thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, "Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you Mary, to take to you Mary for your wife." For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You said to the her? Yes. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be the child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated to God with us. Thank you. Verse 20, but while he thought about these things, Joseph, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David. That language is, son of David, is messianic language. Um, Matthew references the Old Testament 76 times and in writings, and he quotes the Old Testament 53 times. Without the Old Testament, without the old law, would there be a new testament or new law? That's pretty simple. No. But yet people still want to grab old and put it with the new. That's yeah, only parts of it. But that's as simple as I can speak to somebody and they will still dismiss you. Why would you have the old why would you have a new? You know, if the old wasn't now the old. And then that's, just, that's as plain as I can just speak. <clears throat> I brought this example up in school this past week when we were talking about Hester mm -hmm. Friend. It was Carl's letter, and the kids now don't understand why you would brand someone with a Carl's letter. Why was it so bad? I went mean, back to this, and we talked about how Jesus mm -hmm. and how um, Joseph thought about putting Mary away mm -hmm. because he knew definitely he hadn't touched her, so, but he did not have sex with I'm glad you brought that up. It's been a while since I thought of that. But when I when I read that, it was like, oh, this is scandalous. It was. And we felt that way. These kids have nothing. It's like, what? They don't go, some don't go at all, so they need nothing. Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, listen to the news. I was in that sleep in in one day last week. The group ISIS over there stirring up all that stuff. They 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 killed a woman last week. Stone. Mm -hmm. yeah. For the exact same they thing. Yes. The man, but, they did. but the woman. Oh yeah, they'll bring that up quick, won't they? It's funny how that works. Some people. Verse twenty-two. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. What prophet? Isaiah. Isaiah. Uh, verse 23 here is a reference of Isaiah 7.14. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. His name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. 24 and 25. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Galatians, we're backing up to chapter 3, verse 26. Galatians was written by who? The book of Galatians. Paul. Paul. Who else? If you, if you read it, you're like, oh, this can't be anybody but Paul. It was written to refute the Judaizers and to call Christians to faith and freedom in Christ. This is... this. 
very material is what I got into an argument, discussion, discussion, with several people on Facebook about. The funny thing is, one of them's an atheist, one of them's an agnostic, and the other one I got to thinking about it, I'm like, he's basically a Judaizer because he knows the Bible, but he picks this and picks that. It's fine. <laughs> Levity's a good thing, it's fine. <laughs> yes, exactly. But that's what was going on with my discussion, but it was over this exact same thing. So Galatians three twenty six. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Verse 26, for you are all sons of God through what? Through faith in Christ. Hearing there is kind of implied. How do you get faith? Hearing. Belief is faith. Um, For as many of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Once you repent, confess, those are implied. You wouldn't repent and confess if you didn't believe and become baptized. So once you are baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, then there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. What about... What about... uh, this one person must be addressed as reverend. Didn't say that. What about this one person must be addressed as pope? Didn't say that. It said one. As long as what? We're in Christ. 29, and if, that if should be this big in everybody's Bibles, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember who he was talking to here. Judaizers, people are saying, well, I'm, I can trace my lineage back through it. Love doesn't matter. <clears throat> Down to verse number three. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. What's the world? Yes, yes, yes. Someone read verses... Um, what are what's it? Galatians uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7. of time had come. What does it mean, fullness of time? In whose eyes? The fulfilling of the prophecies. Yes. About Jesus. Yes. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. What law? The old law. Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but to what? Fulfill it. So when Jesus died for our sins and rose on the third day, the old law was what? Finished. Finished. It was fulfilled. It was finished. It was done away with. It was complete. When you finish something, do you keep on doing it? No. Our house has a lot of work to do. Constantly. The difference is our house keeps on breaking. God came and finished it once and for all. I'm never going to finish our house once and for all. It needs to be painted. It needs to be done. A bunch of other stuff needs to be done. But when when I get one job done, I'm not going to be like, okay, I'm going to do it again. Mm-mm. 
when I'm finished, I want to be finished with something, but God will be finished and is finished with that. Um, to redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Sons of who? God. Through who? Jesus Christ. Yes. Down to verse number 7. Therefore you are no longer a slave or a servant, but a son. Uh, slave or servant to what? Sin. Sin. What did we just say? Yeah. Sin. And if a son, if, then an heir of God through what? Christ. John 2.11, this is changing to sin, signs and miracles. This, John 2.11 and then John 20, verses 30 through 31. <clears throat> Who wrote the book of John? Easy this morning. Easy. John the Apostle. What was, uh, who was John's brother? James. James. <coughs> what were John and James, what was their nickname? What were they called? Sons of Thunder. Sons of Thunder. Love it. It's awesome. <clears throat> verse number 11, John 2, verse 11. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. We didn't read verses 1 through 10. What happened in verses 1 through 10? Everyone knows this. They went to a wedding. What's the rest of the story? What happened? Mm-hmm. And said, they're out of wine. <laughs> and Jesus said, what? Yeah, what's that have to do with me? So, long story short, Jesus turned water into wine. Everybody jumps on this. Jesus turned water into wine. This is a little bit of backstory on this. Jesus, that's Jesus' first recorded miracle, if I think if you do everything chronologically. <clears throat> they called it like in verse like 9 or 10, they, they called it the good wine. You know, after he turned the water into wine, they ran out of the first wine, and then they said, hey, you brought out the good wine. What do they mean, the good wine? The f- it was better, but it was fresh. This is totally aside from our topic this morning. Fresh wine, fresh fruit of the vine. If it was fresh fruit of the vine, did it have time to ferment and become alcoholic wine? No. No. No, if you study history and everything, how come, what did they keep wine in if you carried it with you? Did you keep it in a plastic? No, in a leather, something leather. Either a leather pouch or you keep it in the stomach of like a sheep stomach or something like that. Mm. One of the things with that is, when you did that, the natural, because it's not glass, it's not plastic, it wasn't something that didn't get into the, what you kept in it, it would take on some of that, and there was yeast in there, and there was, well, guess what? If it stayed in there long enough, the older it got, the less fresh it got, it started to ferment, become alcoholic. This was the good wine, this was the fresh wine. Was this alcoholic wine? No. That's it. <laughs> Uh, this Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. As we said, this is Jesus' first recorded act, uh, one of them. What's it mean it manifested his glory, where his glory was manifest? Showed and proved. Yes. It showed and proved it. What was the last part of verse number 11? And his disciples <clears throat> believed in him. To manifest his glory, it took his power and made it where all could see it. And closing John uh, 20, verses 30 through 31. Would somebody read John uh, 20? Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Before you get to that, okay. I was just thinking about what you just said. Uh, it said that, that, that they believed it when they saw what he did. Today we see a magician do something, you're like, oh, you didn't do that. You know, we, we don't believe that. <laughs> 
apparently Jesus did something that, you know, the magicians couldn't do. Mm -hmm. You know, it had not been replicated, and they were like, wow. That's very true. You know? yeah. So we, we see a magician today, and we're like, you know, yeah, whatever, you know, it's just smoking there. Yeah. You know? Or you start looking up, you go on YouTube, or, or you go online, like, how do they do that? Yeah. That, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a pretty powerful little statement at the very end of that verse. And, and they believed him. That's very powerful. Uh, verses 38 through 31. Will somebody read 30 and 31? Thank you. Did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. This is just some of it. Just so you'll know. Verse 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Why were these those things written? that you may believe. Uh, written, once again, we're kind of comparing. This is written, this is like, so you can read it, so you can hear it. <clears throat> that you may believe. Yes, sir. <clears throat> it says here that, that these things were written. Okay. It, uh, it says that Jesus did many more things that weren't written. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just the other day I was... Uh, Looking at some archaeologist site, they found a scrap of parchment. And it's just it's just a tattered little nasty scrap of parchment that they found in the diggings that they were doing. And on it, in this one little piece, was inscribed where Jesus bred, breathed mm -hmm. life back into a stillborn baby. Mm -hmm. And it, it, they were just ecstatic over this. You know, it it, it actually talked about it. it was just a little remnant. You know, that was yeah. rotting away. It just happened to be on there. So that sort of proves, you know, that, hey, you know, the Bible says everything's not written down. Or if we don't have everything that Jesus did, you know. But, yeah. What are, what are naysayers going to say? Well, see, it wasn't in the Bible. That wasn't when all the, they all went into the room. They didn't put that in the Bible. Therefore, the whole Bible's, none yeah. of that's written. Yeah. That's what they're going to say. But the Bible itself says, this is just, this, this is enough. Yeah. There's more out there. But this is enough. You know, that's, those kind of things are, to someone who believes, when you, when you see that, it's not like, oh, now I really believe. No, that's like, duh. Yeah. Of course there's other stuff out there. How can, how can there not? Exactly. So these things are written that you, could, that, that you may believe. Here's enough. But this is written that you may believe. Believe what? <coughs> believe that Jesus Christ, who... Jesus Christ is, is who? Son of God. The Son of God. Remember what we said earlier? If you don't believe that Mary, this was a virgin birth, if you don't believe that, stop. Because you're not going to get to the next part. <clears throat> uh, the Son of God and that believing you may. Belief. Or believe. Belief leads to action. Which is what? What do we have to do? Here. Confess, be baptized, yes. And that believing you may have what? Life. How, how do you have life? In his name. What's, what does it mean in his name? Through his name. What do we call ourselves? Christians. How do we become and stay Christians? Through obedience, yes, by keeping his commandments. To the old law? To the new law. New law of faith, yes. 